One of the main worries I hear people express about the new gene editing technologies is that they'll put us on a slippery slope towards a future dystopia in which a genetic arms race puts pressure on parents to design babies to be not just free of serious diseases and disabilities, but smarter, more athletic, more beautiful, in short, better than well. This Mother Jones article asks, is embryonic gene editing research a slippery slope to designer babies? And similar headlines are very easy to find. Slippery slope arguments are, in fact, ubiquitous in debates from gay marriage to gun control. And I see it in my students. So when I ask my students what their instincts are about hot button moral issues, the slippery slope argument is one of the first things they'll reach for. So given the work we ask these arguments to do for us, it's worth uh, subjecting them to some scrutiny. This is a graphic illustration of the slippery slope worry. So the vertical axis there measures how good or bad our circumstances are. And the circumstances are mapped by that red curve. So the higher up that curve climbs, the better we're doing, the further down it slips, the worse off we are. So we're hanging out here in the status quo, and that's a world in which human gene editing is still very much in an experimental phase. It's not something the general public has much access to. Now it looks like if we start climbing up that curve to a world where uh, gene editing technologies are widely available for the treatment and prevention of serious diseases like sickle cell disease, that's an improvement in our circumstances, right? A move up to that peak. It looks really good. But proponents of slippery slope worries will say, as attractive as that peak is, once we unleash that technology, there's not anything that's going to keep us from sliding all the way down that slope into the valley below. And that's the, the world of uh, designer babies. Now, the first thing I want to point out about this picture is that how effective that argument is, how worried we should really be about that slide into the world of designer babies, will depend a lot on the overall shape of that red curve. So the way I've drawn it here, the status quo is pretty good, right? The world in which uh, access to these gene editing technologies is highly limited, where we haven't yet fully embraced the technology, is a world that's pretty high up that vertical axis. It's do we're doing pretty well in that world. But if you have sickle cell disease, you might think I've gotten the shape of that curve all wrong. The status quo is not OK. Things are very bad right now. And we may as well run that risk of sliding into the uh, second valley if running that risk is the only thing that will allow, give us the opportunity to climb out of the valley we currently find ourselves in. Either way, why think we'll slide off that peak at all? Why can't we just stay, stand firm at the top of the peak? So proponents of slippery slope arguments will argue that unless we can find some sharp cutoff point between the kinds of conditions that we think justify intervention with the new technologies and the kinds of conditions that don't, inevitably accepting those interventions in some cases will lead us to accepting them in others and then in yet more until we end up at the bottom of the slope. So use the technology to prevent or treat cancer? Sure. Sickle cell disease? Yes. Well. What about high cholesterol? How about asthma? How about unusually short stature? Well, once we're using these technologies to address unusually short stature, why not make people a little bit taller and so on? Now, that kind of reasoning actually relies on a fallacy, sometimes called the continuum fallacy or the line drawing fallacy. We don't actually need to deny the existence of a complicated gray area in the middle in order to insist that there are certain conditions on one end of the spectrum that clearly justify interventions with new technologies and other conditions or other situations on the other end of the spectrum that clearly don't justify such interventions. All we need is a principled account of why we should use the technologies to address, say, cancer or sickle cell disease and why we should not use them to make people taller or better looking or smarter than average. Whether or not that principle will pump out a clear answer for some of the hard cases in the murky middle, like asthma or unusually short stature. OK, so now let's think a little bit more carefully about that metaphor of the slippery slope. Certainly, it can be hard to stand firm at the top of the slippery slope. And that's partly because gravity accelerates. So take even a small step down a slippery slope, and you start building momentum. And it actually becomes harder and harder to stop. But it's not clear what could be playing that role of the accelerant in the cases that we're thinking about here. Now, it's likely that if we accept uh, one conclusion, say that we should use gene editing technologies to treat or prevent cancer or sickle cell disease, we're more likely to accept the next conclusion, say that we should use uh, those technologies to uh, prevent high cholesterol. 
But it doesn't follow from that that we're likely to end up all the way at the bottom of the slope embracing designer babies, much less that it's inevitable that we're at, we'll end up down at the bottom of the slope. A better metaphor might be that of a chain of dominoes. So certainly once you knock over that first domino, the second one is very likely to fall over, and probably quite a few dominoes will fall over. But as anyone who's ever played with dominoes knows, it's actually really hard to get that last domino in the chain to fall over. And that's, uh, so in the absence of something like um, a gain in momentum, the domino effect sort of tends to peter out. And that's particularly true in cases where we don't want to knock over that last domino in the chain. We don't want to end up in the world of designer babies. Again, uh, maybe we can prevent that just by identifying a principle that can help us, ident you know, help us explain uh, cases where we do want to intervene with new technologies and cases where we don't. Now, what a principle like that might look like is a topic I'll have to save for the discussion.